Well, hello, hello, hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? How are you? It's a hallelujah moment. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, Shabbat shalom, everyone. Greetings from someone whose eyes are open. Yes. It may not look like it, but they're open. <laughs> <laughs> so. Absolutely. Well, I don't know what we're going to do this morning, but God does. I'm I'm just enjoying reading the Word with a new set of eyes. Yeah? Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. And it can be terrifying, too. Like, oh, my God, you know, I didn't know this until now. Mm-hmm. That's because we weren't ready for it at the time, and now we are. It's putting a f- seed in us. And we can still ask for forgiveness. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't know this. Well, we limit God and what he can do for us and Uh through us because we don't believe. Hmm. And that is a problem. Yeah. Yes. I agree. Sometimes we don't believe because we just don't have any knowledge of it. Mm Mm-hmm. And sometimes we don't believe because we're stiff-necked and hard-hearted. Yeah. I want it my way. <laughs> and v- or very impatient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're only 15 minutes late beginning my class. If we don't get it going pretty quick, we won't have time to cover anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, let's pray. Father God, we love you. You are the amazing God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who delivered your people from the bondage of slavery in Egypt. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You are such a mighty God. There is no God like you anywhere. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So we are here today worshiping you and keeping your commanded instructions regarding the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And we are going to continue doing everything in our power to be what you want us to be. Yes. You want us to be like you, we'll be like you. Thank you, Lord. And just open that door so we can peek through it. (laughs) (laughs) Help us to understand what we're seeing. Yes. Well, we give our praise and thanksgiving and offerings unto you, Lord, because you alone are worthy. Amen. So here we are on this Sabbath day, worshiping you and honoring you. Let it be pleasing in your sight, Lord. Thank you, Father. Everybody say, Lord, I'm hungry. Lord, I'm hungry. I ask you for spiritual food from heaven. Ask you for spiritual food from heaven. And I'm thirsty, Lord. And I'm thirsty, Lord. I ask you for living water. I ask you for living water. Pour it out upon me. Pour it out upon me. So I'll have plenty to give to others. So I'll have plenty to give to others. In the name of Messiah Yeshua. In the name of Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Baruch Hashem. Yes. Baruch Hashem. Well, you all may be seated. And um, I'm really excited about what God is doing. It's really cool. Everything that the adversary tries to do against us turns out to work for us. And everything that witchcraft tries to curse us with bounces back on them. I see it over and over and over again. And so when we think about how witchcraft is so... They're hungry for power, okay? They want to be known as the powerful religion. And it's always been that way. But the truth is, Yahweh has always been mightier, greater, greater than they are. And he has secrets in this universe that nobody and nothing even knows about. Can't even hardly imagine it. So we are... Very excited about finding some of these things out. 
God doesn't destroy anything. He makes it invisible to us because he doesn't want us to find it right now. But he is such a powerful God, he doesn't need to destroy the works of witchcraft. It's irrelevant. His, his power and might goes so far beyond all the other pagan deities of this world that there's no comparison of them to, to our faith. Witchcraft has been working against God and his kingdom ever since the very beginning. Ever, ever since the very beginning of time. Now, we've been studying in the book of Hebrews. I don't know if we'll continue that or not. It depends on God what he's showing me. But <coughs> I think I will open up um, the book of Hebrews and just see what God shows me to do from here. Come on, Bible, open it. I think I'm going to have to reopen my, I'm going to shut my Bible down and reopen it. <laughs> if nothing else, we'll just be Enjoying a nice little break while we wait for the Bible to open. <laughs> What's impossible for God? Nothing. What I know about quantum physics, that's a no-brainer. Man has already done some pretty amazing things using quantum theory. Let's see, let me get this one open here. I guess there it is. Now I get my Bible open up. I was clicking on the wrong button. Let's try that again using the New King James Version. And I think we were in Hebrews chapter 13 or something like that. Oh, man, every time I open up a Bible verse again, I'm seeing the, the uh, quantum theory of physics popping into my face. I don't know what's going on here, but praise God anyway. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to go up one more chapter and just head into it full tilt. Now faith is the substance of the things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now where do we get this faith? From the Torah. The promises that God made us in the original covenant. That's where we get it. And for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the world's plural, interesting, were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, although through which he obtained witness that he was, a, he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it he being dead still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away, so he did not see death. Let me get this on raised up here. Let me 
just skip on down here to Enoch. By faith was taken so away he did not see death. How, where did he go? <laughs> he went into the Rakia. What's the Rakia? That's that interface between heaven and earth. That's what it is. And was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteous, which is according to faith. By faith, Abraham um, obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as a foreign country, dwelling in tents and with Isaac and Yaakov, with the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city, which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past age because the judge she judged him faithful who had pro promised therefore from one man and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude innumerable innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore i have learned over this past year not to judge things by old uh, physics, by the old natural physics that we see and understand. When God spoke to Ezekiel, he says, speak to these bones. <laughs> Remember the valley of the dry bones? And they were bleached white. Can these bones live again? Well, if God wants them to, who's going to stop it? And so I see myself as being old and bleached out, you know. But God doesn't see me that way. With God, I can do anything he wants me to do. I can live as long as he wants me to live. I can overcome every adversarial situation. And I don't live by modern uh Earthly physics, I live by the heavenly throne and his physics, quantum physics, if you will. And we are beginning to learn more about how those things work and unlocking the secrets and the mysteries of God's kingdom. It's pretty powerful stuff. And so he was, um, all these people were waiting for the city which has foundations whose builder and maker is God. By faith, Sarah received herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead. Who's that speaking of? Abraham. From one man... Him as good as dead were born as many as the stars in the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Amazing. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on earth so they weren't living by earthly physics were they they were living by heavenly physics the the uh, heavenly design that god created see these scientists that cl claim to be atheists they don't know nothing they are just ignorant little dummies they're like little monkeys running around, poking at buttons and wondering what happens if you hit this one. 
They don't know what they're doing. For those who say such things are declare plainly that they seek a homeland. I can I say amen to that. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. How can anybody declare what is laid up for us by God? You're going to have to be a believer in God to make that happen. By Abraham, when he t was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Yeah. Of whom? Son. Yeah. Of whom it was said, Isaac, your seed will be called. In Isaac, your seed will be called, including that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, concluding that God was able to raise him up from the dead, also from which also received him in a figurative sense. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things that come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of his sons, Joseph, and worshipped and leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. That's all amazing when you know these stories. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Messiah greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he, he looked to the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible by faith he kept the passover and the sprinkling of blood lest he who dis um, let's see where did i go By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover by sprinkling of blood. There you go. Lest he was destroyed and the first firstborn should touch them. By faith he, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempted to do so and were drowned. In the very sea that Moses walked through, they were drowned. That's pretty awesome. Verse 30, by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith the harlot Rehab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah also David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, and stopped the mouths of lions, quenched with violence, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword out of the weaknesses, were made strong, became valiant and in battle, and turned to flight of the armies of the aliens. Turned to fight the uh no, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might be obtained a better resurrection. Still others had a trial of mockings and scourgings and yes, of chains and imprisonments. They were stoned. They were sawn in two, were tempted. 
They were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy, and they wandered in the deserts. <laughs> Uh, that would be Goyim. The, Goyim? Yeah. That was Non-Israelites, in other words. Okay. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> I think I went on too far. And what more shall I say for the time would fail? Okay, I was, I read that part. Anyway, I just want you to see that there are so many things in here that are reflecting upon this quantum theory of physics. And another thing is we see that Yeshua, when he went to see his disciples before his death, he, he translated be, through a locked door into their presence and stood there in front of them and talked to them of the things that were coming. Yeah. Amazing stuff. Yeah. And these things are all feasible in quantum theory of physics. I'm just going to scroll down here. All of these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Who are these witnesses? All the people he's been talking about. That's the witnesses. Well, yeah, we're witnesses too, but you know what? They are still with us Amen. in quantum physics. physics. Yep. So, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. The weights are the are the um, things of this physical world and physical physics that we have come to trust in that are not really trustworthy. Mm. And that's the problem. Those of us who are with Yahweh, we don't have restrictions placed upon us. Amen. Like the physics of this natural world puts restrictions on us. But quantum physics loosens everything up and makes, you, makes everything possible. So let us lay aside every weight and sin which easily ensnares us. That's what it does. It ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Yeshua, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. All of this, to me, speaks of quantum physics. Well, I guess we'll go down to verse 12. What happened here? I thought I pushed page down. You have not resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the ex exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son dis does not despise the chastening of Yahweh. Do not despise, excuse me. My son, do not despise the chastening of Yahweh. Or be discouraged when you are rebuked by him, for wh whom the Lord Yahweh loves, 
he chastens and he scourges every son whom he receives. It's amazing. All of us. This is what I learned this past year. God allows these things to come upon us as tests so that we can be proven his child. And I love that. If you are enduring chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there who a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not pay it much more readily be in subjection to a father of spirits even than live? For they indeed, for they indeed, for a few uh, days chasten us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit, that we may be protectors of, the, of his holiness. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterwards it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dis dislocated, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord, Yahweh. Looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up and cause trouble. And by this, many have become defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. Oy, oy, oy. For who you know that afterwards when... See, all these things are speaking to me of the same thing, of the quantum... Uh, Laws of quantum physics. Esau selling his birthright. He didn't have his heart and mind set upon the heavenly kingdom. He wasn't able to see that quantum physics aspect of his life. For you knew, know that afterwards when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. For you have not come to the mountain that may be touched, that burned with fire, and to blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of the trumpet and the voice of words, so that those who heard it begged that the word should not be spoken to, the, you know, to them any more, for they could not endure what was commanded. And if so much uh, as a blast... A beast, excuse me, and if so much as a beast touches the mountains, it shall be stoned with shot or shot with an arrow. So terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. But you have come to Mount Sion, this, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Yeshua, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks of better things than that of Abel. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, how much more so shall you not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven? whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised, saying, Yet one more time I spoke, not only the earth, I shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. Now this, let once, once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken, as of the things that are made, and that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers. 
for by doing so, some have unknowingly uh, entered, entertained angels. Remember, prisoners, the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed is undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers God will judge. <coughs> Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have, for he himself said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we may bodily, so we may boldly say, Yahweh is my help, helper. I will not fear. <clears throat> what can man do to me? Remember those who rule over you. <clears throat> Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Yeshua the Messiah is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried about with various strange doctrines, for it is good that the heart be established by grace and not with foods, which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. We'll see what we've got here. Uh, that's what I thought. We we're really close to the very end of it. <clears throat> By the way, James, the book of James was written to the 12 tribes. He knew where the lost tribes were. They weren't lost to him. He says they're scattered abroad. Anyway, I just wanted to show a few of these things to you. Mm -hmm. All of these things are God's domain, and we may enter those if we have faith, if we can see past the nose on our face. We've got to be able to see past the nose on our face. <clears throat> Any comments or questions from anybody? When it says to entertain the angels and the strangers, what does that mean? Well, the word angels <coughs> is malak. Right. And it simply means servant. And it could be speaking of the spiritual angels, or it could be talking about physical men who are also Constant. messengers, servants. Uh -huh. The messengers of the king, or the messengers of the rabbi, or the messengers of the prophets of old, or whatever. They're all angels. Right. And all of those men who lived before that have been talking about here in Hebrews, that cloud of witnesses... Those are all angels. angels. Yes. All of them are. But the word entertain. Well, to give food and uh, comfort to. Hospitable? Yeah, to be hospitable. <clears throat> okay. Is that good? Yep. Thank you. Somebody else got some good questions from this class? I, if you don't have them, um, I'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> were y'all awake while I was teaching? <laughs> <laughs> or were you floating off into the Rockia somewhere? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Our book, the Bible, the Holy Bible. That is a very deeply spiritual book. And if you don't think it comes directly from the Rakia, you're mistaken. And what we would do well to do is to go into the Rakia and bring it back with us.
What do we get worried about mostly, anybody? Survival, like food, shelter. Okay. Money. Money. What can you live without? Well, a lot of material things, for sure. Do we really have to have a house to live in with four walls and a roof? What house did uh, Jochen on the Immerser live in? Yeah. Well, there are plenty of places for him to live in, weren't there? <laughs> there were a lot yes. of caves back there. Yep. A lot of caves. So what, could God take care of you without providing you a house with four walls and a roof? Yes. Oh, yeah. Y'all are sure quiet. What's going on out there in internet land? It's quiet. <laughs> it's because it's quiet. <laughs> <coughs> what is your means of connecting with the supernatural realm of God? Well, prayer and uh, the, the ins keeping the in and following the instructions of the Torah. Um, like in our prayer, the Ve'ahavta, we're to keep everything in the forefront of our mind and heart. Mm -hmm. Bind it to us. What about your imagination? Mm -hmm. Is that possibly a doorway to some of these things? Mm. Yes. Of course it is. What about the Moedim? Mm -hmm. Do they ever activate your imagination? Yes. Can anybody tell me of an experience you've had where your imagination seemed to have been activated by the observance of the holy days? Only that um, the reflection of the prophetic signs that are to come. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been worshiping God here in the auditorium and suddenly wake up to realize that you're not where you thought you were? There was a time when I was uh, in the congregation and God just told me, sit down and be quiet. Mm -hmm. So I sat down and I'd be quiet. And I started hearing people in the auditorium praying, but they weren't praying out loud. And it seemed like I was hearing voices from all over the Congregation of people praying to Yahweh. I thought that was pretty amazing. You reckon I was dipping into the Rakia and listening to them communicating with their God? Oh, yeah. There are times when I'm praying at night and I find myself talking to somebody. You know, one of the members maybe is having trouble and they're crying out to God for help. That's where I'm actually going into that place called the Rakia and I'm ministering to our people there 
through through the vehicle of prayer and the imagination, I am there before them, helping them, strengthening them, worshiping God with them, encouraging them, and it happens a lot. I've had people come up to me, Rabbi, did you did you come visit me last night while I was praying? <laughs> I said, well, could be, because <laughs> I, I do that often. I don't know. Sometimes, mostly it's like a dream when I come out of it, I don't even hardly remember it. There's a big world out there to be explored. And we only know the little surface parts of it. We don't really, we don't really get into the depth of it. Well, I guess we've done what God wants us to do today. All of us need to be getting into the Rocky yeah. and find out more and more about what God will allow us to do. Mm-hmm. Being certain that we are obedient to Yahweh, following his instructions. But you won't know for sure unless you have studied the Torah. And walked in it. Well, I guess we've given a... Okay. What does one do... To enter the imagination, enter the Rakia that you have experienced when the distractions and confusion of the world are heaviest and at their most pinnacle. First of all, understand that's the way God designed everything so that you would have a plenty of distractions to try to keep you out of there because unless you're well disciplined disciplined you can't control your mind to stay in or out of it so the discipline is very important where you discipline yourself to think correctly to act correctly to uh, behave the way a son of God should behave. And the imagination is our key for unlocking it all. Uh, The physical world is a huge distraction. The world is against us if we are with God. They hate us. But It doesn't matter whether they hate us or not. We serve Almighty Yahweh. (laughs) Woo-hoo. And we are his children. And he is opening up the mysteries of the universe to us. Because he is the creator of it all. We're seeing, the more I study uh, about quantum physics and the more I read the Bible, the more I see the connections. I think the Bible is certainly a huge information pathway to to quantum physics. And <clears throat> when Yeshua was walking around in the crowds and they see him one minute and the next minute he's gone, that's him passing through into the Rakia, into another place. How did Yeshua go back in time and and bring his witness to the uh, ones who were in prison 
in the, you know, 4,000 years prior. Well, it was through this process of quantum physics. It's a, it is a, I guess, <coughs> there really aren't sufficient words to describe it. But <coughs> nothing fits, but everything fits. So he could be sitting here right in front of us, teaching us, and in the meantime, be off in the quantum zone speaking to people 4,000 years ago. That doesn't make sense in our brains. Our brains can't grab it because we are birthed in the natural world by natural people, by natural parents. <coughs> but we are also born of Almighty Yahweh, just like Yeshua was. And just like he says, everything I've done, you'll do, and even greater things than I've done, you'll do because I go to the Father. Well, he opened that doorway up for us. So we could do these things. But we have to be very careful not to be after uh, filthy lucre. We can't serve lucre and serve God. We have to choose who we're going to serve. Now, it's true that sometimes we need finances in order to serve God. But God knows what those things things are, what those times are, what situations we need to be moving through, and he will assist us in getting in there and learning and understanding. To you, it may just be a miracle. Oh, wow, <laughs> you know. Uh, there was a guy saying that he had to go to a meeting uh, that he was supposed to teach at. He was a minister. <laughs> And he was driving through Louisiana down in the bayou country. And he got turned around and on the wrong road. And he says he, don't, he doesn't know how he did it, but when he came to himself, he was 100 miles out of the way, the wrong direction. So he prayed and asked God to help him to get to his meeting on time because there was no way physically for him to do that at that point. And so he just started driving, and within just a few minutes, his eyes popped wide open, and there he was sitting at the, at the place where he was supposed to go to teach. And he was on time. So all of these things, people have dipped into them, and they didn't know how they got there, and they didn't know how it came to be, but there they were. And to them, it was a miracle. Okay, well, it seems miraculous to us. It just seems miraculous. So everything is, is possible for those who believe. Did that help any? Yes. So... You know, having a miracle, having somebody healed while laying on of hands, that's another part of the quantum uh, theory of uh, physics. And I have that happen to me constantly, constantly. My wife says, honey, would you pray for me? I got pain over here and here. So I lay hands on her and I pray for her and bada beam, bada boom, the pain's gone. That's a miracle. Did I go into the Rakia to do that? Well, yeah. Did I know I was in the Rakia while I was doing it? No. <laughs> but when I came to myself, the pain was gone and she was feeling very good. And so consequently, to me, it was a miracle. That's fine. It works, it works, right? So <clears throat> we each have to just explore these things with the best of our own ability. And God will show us how to enter, move through, and depart. I really believe it's possible to enter the Rakia and come out anywhere you want. 
anywhere you want with no exceptions. I've even, I've even took a swim in the lake of fire. I didn't get burned. But I saw the devil in there. <laughs> he wasn't happy. <laughs> so all of these things are possible for those who believe. Did it really happen to you? Who can say? Is that helpful? Yes. Well, that's all we have time for in a morning class. So uh, we'll be uh, continuing with our morning service shortly. So don't go away. You might miss going into the Rockia with us. <laughs>